today we're only going to use the information that um, mainstream science itself makes widely available to us in their articles and books and uh, websites, etc. What you're looking at on the screen is, of course, the heliocentric model of our solar system. Now, it's recently come to my attention that there's been, there is a lot of anomalies with this model. It doesn't always work out right. And that is for another video. Because what I'm going to show you today, uh, the model, whether you subscribe to a heliocentric, geocentric, concave model, um, doesn't really matter for the purposes of this video's discussion. We're going to discuss where we are in the universe. So for this, let me start off by letting you know that it's uh, something I didn't know. Maybe some of you out there already knew this. For uh, approximately 10 years now, maybe longer, scientists have, well, they, they're no longer, um, they're, they're not trying to figure out how to explain this and still hold on to their, a majority of them are atheists and they want to still hold on to their worldview. But they've had a significant discovery that the Earth is at the center of the universe not at some kind of virtual center, but the actual center. On this website here, it kind of gives a nice summary of what I'm talking about. Most cosmologists will not admit it publicly, but perhaps over a beer they will tell you that some, that what is happening. Observations over the last 50 years culminating with the Planck satellite result, results of March 2013 set modern science on a counter-revolution leading closer to ideas formed 500 years ago. Today's cosmology is based on two broad principles, the Copernican principle, we are not in a special place in the universe, and the cosmological principle, the Copernican principle plus isotropy, which uh, the view that from anywhere in the universe, it, it all looks about the same. Starting with early studies of cosmic microwave background, or CMB, and in recent years, culminating with results from the COBE WMAP satellites, scientists were faced with a signal at the largest scales of the universe, a signal that pointed right back at us, indicating that we are in a special place in the universe. Without getting overly technical, the Copernican and cosmological principles required that any variation in the radiation from CMB be more or less randomly distributed throughout the universe, especially on a large scale. Results from WMAP satellite in the early 2000s indicated that when looking at large scales of the universe, the noise could be partitioned into hot and cold sections. And this partitioning is aligned with our ecliptic plane and equinoxes. This partitioning and alignment resulted in an axis through the universe, which scientists dubbed the axis of evil because it damage it, da the damage it does to their theories. This axis passes right through our tiny portion of the universe. Now, Lawrence Krauss, and just to say, this obviously is a web page that... Uh, clearly says that, you know, it, it isn't from one of these scientists. But this quote here, that this is on this article, I'm just going to go right here to the source. It's written by him, Lawrence M. Krauss. Let's take a look at who this guy is. He's a cosmologist and a uh, physicist. And, of course, in his bio, he's a atheist. You can see how this is a big problem for him and for other people like him. Uh, this is a big deal because when you think about it, this isn't like um, evolution where you, you're kind of having to piece together what happened back in time. They're looking at this now. This is observable now. And they have spent billions of dollars trying to actually disprove this because they, they don't want it to be true. 
uh, but unfortunately, three satellites and the third one, Planck, was designed to operate completely different than the first two, uh, hoping that they would get different results. Unfortunately for them, it reaffirmed everything the first two satellites told them. But let's go to the source here. If you go to the article, I'm going to leave a, a links to everything you see on the screen in the description section below. So you can read this stuff for yourself. He writes a really long article here. You have to go all the way to the bottom to get the quote. Here he is with uh, Stephen Hawking in the background here and a small picture. But the quote that's on the other website is right here. You can find it right here. Let's go back here because you can see it clearer. But when you look at the cosmic microwave background map, you will also see that the structure that is observed is in fact in a weird way correlated with the plane of the Earth around the sun. This is Copernicus coming back to haunt us. That's crazy. We're looking at, uh, at the whole universe and there's no way there should be a correlation of structure with our motion of the Earth around the sun. The plane of the Earth around the sun, the ecliptic, that would say we are truly the center of the universe. Now, whether you think the Earth is moving or not isn't the point here. Whether you, you the point is that this guy understands that we're the center of the universe, and he's having a hard time living with it. As a matter of fact, I've found that this is highly disturbing to some people. Now, to me, this gives me a sense of security, a sense of purpose, uh, a sense of, wow, we're, we're really are, you know, the center of creation, God's creation. I have no problem with this. To me, this is a, like a warm security blanket, you know, knowing that we're, we're, we are, for some reason, created right here and we mean something. This isn't random. This is a Wikipedia page explaining the cosmic microwave background, and uh, it's a lot of technical jargon. I'm trying to decipher this uh, in layman terms so that I can understand it. But for you people that like, you know, are into astrophysics or cosmology, I'll leave all these links. There is a uh, thing here at Cornell University. There's a PDF document you can download. It's really lengthy. It has all kinds of formulas on it. Here's another one from Cornell. This is like give you an idea what's on some of these PDFs from these uh, universities. They talk, this one's talking about the WM, uh, WMAP probe. Uh, and you can see here kind of stuff that's on it. And you can read through some of this stuff. It will explain it in some portions kind of clear enough that you get an idea that there. This is means something big, right? Now, this has been known widely for about 10 years or more, uh, but you don't see this on the Discovery Channel. Nobody really talks about this. This isn't what you're being taught in school, but these are these scientists are trying, I think right now, trying to figure out a way to, to, to uh, do away with this. This brings me to a point about geocentricity. Um, there are anomalies. Uh, I don't know if you know this. Um, I didn't know this. I I thought that uh, there had been experiments that showed the Earth was moving, and that's why scientists could tell you that as a fact. But let me uh, just show you something here real quick, a little sidetrack. If you were to Google um, experiments that show the Earth is moving, You will find out that this article here and this about the pen, pendulum, this is pretty much all they got to offer. And this has been proven as meaningless because the pendulum could be reacting to everything moving around us. Uh, you can read whole articles about that. Um, there's uh, this Michael Morley, Michelson Morley experiment. Uh, all these experiments they have done. Uh, the, you'll find all these conspiracy uh, things or, or, or geocentric links. Uh, 
but you won't find any. There are no ground experiments. They can they can show you the Earth is moving, and that's I found that shocking. Okay, but that's not the point of this video. Let's go back to talking about we're at the center of the universe. This, this it's irrelevant to me whether we are or not are not moving to this particular topic here because it doesn't matter. It's still either way. Let's say we're the center. Then if you were to find out we're not moving on top of that, that would mean we're not only the center of the universe, but the entire universe is revolving around us, which is mind-blowing, right, if that were true. But I'm still looking into that. I haven't discounted that theory, but I'm just let's just focus on what mainstream science is willing to admit. Now, they hate this so much, they call it the axis of evil because this totally shatters their worldview if they can't you know, do away with this. This is an article here, 13 more things, uh, you know, like science can't explain or that science, you know, blows scientists' minds. This, this is a small article here about the axis of evil, as they call it. What's interesting is if you click and look at some of the other things on this list, and I ended up on a Home Depot ad somehow, isn't that something? Okay. That's weird. The link is not working. What the heck is going on? Must be a hotspot or something. I uh, wanted to show you. Um, there is a. I, I can't see. The, look, there's, there's actually a line here, like a overbleed from the ad. I'll try one more. I'll try one more. Nope. It's going to go to the ad. Okay, there is actually, if you click here, 13 more things that don't make sense. There's an anomaly where they, when they slingshot spacecraft and satellites and using the Earth to get out into deep space, uh, like the uh, Rosetta probe, uh, the uh, speed acceleration um, caused by the Earth's gravity doesn't match what it should be. The probes end up going much faster than they should be going. So I guess you can click that on your own and look at it. This is from University of Michigan. I'll link to this PDF document. This is kind of an easy read because it's kind of written in more layman terms. But basically, you know, this admits it right here. Why is the solar system cosmically aligned? Well, you know, it's really Earth. It's like right through our equator and one of these lines go, go through, I think. But the... Um, information here you know shows you where we appear to be um lined up to be in the middle of the universe uh this is uh this has got to make these atheist, the atheist scientists like absolutely bonkers i'm sure i'm going to get all kinds of hate comments on the bottom of this because if you touch evolution or in, in this case I'm, I'm looking at the universe as being nothing like what they what it should be if we're just random, right? Then you have this article from Discovery News. Scientists finding evidence, and this is suggests more like back to geocentricity. You know, they're saying here the universe is spinning. You know, so if the universe is spinning, are we spinning or are we not spinning? You know, it's really weird to think about. This is the official European Space Agency uh, for Planck, the satellite that was supposed to get rid of this problem for the scientists that ended up making it worse. I think this is one of the data pages for Planck. Now, some of this stuff is clearly over my head, but if you have atheist physicists telling you that their, their formulas and observations show that we're the center of the universe, um, this one is uh, another one from New Scientist. Planck shows almost perfect cosmos plus the axis of evil. Because we're, it's so evil if, if we're at the center of the universe. <laughs> axis of evil, a cause for cosmic concern. Um, Planck anomalies, you know, they, they, they can't, it doesn't fit their science. or It's more like scientism today. It's not like... Uh, they're not, I, don't, I don't think they're interested in science because if science goes against their worldview, they got to tweak the system to make it somehow work. This, this is why I'm concerned that the heliocentric model may not be correct because 
these people invented theories to explain away the experiments that should have worked, that didn't give them the results they wanted. <clears throat> I'm not even sure we're dealing with science anymore. That's what worries me. So, uh, so you have all this uh, to go through if you want to. If you want to take the time to go through it, um, some of it, like I said, is obviously written for physicists, not for me. But I can read the other parts. I can read their analysis. It's quite clear what they're concerned about. And just think about that for a second. <clears throat> If science shows that we're at the center of the universe and that the universe is perfectly constructed in a non-random random way, I think that atheists will still find a way to deny it. Um, if you look at, I'm going to do a video soon about Jesus, and I'm going to call it the Jesus factor, and um, how that how that factors into everything. But uh, you know. One of the main things I focus on, I'll focus on that video, is a lecture by Dr. Gary Habermas. I think this guy is the best at explaining this stuff because he he's using their own uh, information against them. Um, their own. He's very logical and he doesn't really um, argue. He just presents data. And you should check out my playlists. I do have uh, um, a neat information in my playlist. If you go to um, Strange Universe, uh, let's see, I'll bring up my playlists here so you can see what's on there. If you're interested in, in looking at a lot of this stuff, there is Strange Universe has 155 videos right now. And you'll find a lot of mind-blowing stuff in there that will make you wonder about all this. If you're more interested in learning about all the evidence for uh, Jesus, I would click on this playlist to find out. Because you see, if, if, if you can, and I believe this for a fact, that we have put people in prison for less evidence and we have executed people for less circumstantial evidence, you can have a court case beyond reasonable doubt proof that Jesus resurrected from the dead. And once you can do that, and it's fascinating to watch atheists basically uh, deny this after they, they, with the evidence that they themselves admit as factual historical evidence. So when you watch the debates, for example, it's not a question of the evidence. It's a question of the atheist saying that that is not enough evidence, which is fascinating to me. Because people will just deny things because they don't like it which uh, is their choice, I guess. Their free will choice to do that. But if you um, if you look at uh, the debates or some of the lectures from Habermas, it's fascinating. Get some of his books, go through his bibliography, you'll be blown away. You, you, I bet you, uh, I didn't know, I went to... Uh, I thought I was informed but about this stuff, and I obviously wasn't. There's a lot of good videos here. Um, another interesting playlist is my UFO playlist, if you're interested in that. It's fascinating uh, what, it, what, what it indicates about UFO activity. It's not really being alien, but more or less being demonic activity or activity from fallen angels. That's for another video also. Anyway. Thanks for tuning in. Check out all the links below. I'll put everything you saw on the screen down there if you're interested in reading it or looking through it. And uh, I hope you all have a good day. I'll see you next time. Bye.